I'd like to welcome each one of you to our devotional study today. I invite you to take your Bible, come with me if you would, to Exodus chapter 1. Exodus chapter 1 in your Bibles. We began a uh, study on the book of Exodus yesterday, and I am excited about this study. Uh, this book of Exodus is just rich with truth for us that we not only learn about the nation of Israel, but that we also can apply to our own lives. There are so many things here uh, in this book that are just wonderful and practical to us. Yesterday, we began an introduction to this book, and we want to continue that introduction today, and then tomorrow, we'll dive into the book. But as we think about that, let's read number, or Exodus rather, chapter 1, and verse 1 through 6. It says, Now these are the names of the children of Israel, which came into Egypt, every man and his own household came with Jacob, Reuben, Simeon, Levi, and Judah, Issachar, Zebulon, and Benjamin. Dan and Naphtali, Gad and Asher, and all the souls that came out of the loins of Jacob were 70 souls. For Joseph was in Egypt already, and Joseph died, and all his brethren, and all that generation. So, as we came into this study yesterday, we defined Exodus, and we mentioned that the word Exodus means going out or way out. And uh, as we look at this, we see that this book describes for us the Exodus of the nation of Israel out of the land of Egypt toward the land of promise. And uh, yesterday, as we dove into the study of this book, we saw here that, that God had already prophesied um, to Abraham that his uh, seed would go into captivity for 400 years, just as we see here in the book of Exodus. And after that, that God would deliver them with a strong and a mighty hand, and we can rejoice in the fact, friends, that our God is a God that keeps his promises, that we can rejoice in the fact that our God is a God of his word. Yesterday, as we began to look into the study, we saw, as we looked at the author, that the Holy Spirit of God is the author. We went to 2 Peter 1, 21, and 2 Timothy 3, verses 16 and 17, to see that, and then we saw also that the Holy Spirit used Moses as the writer of this book. We mentioned yesterday how that how that the uh, Exodus testifies to the fact that Moses is the author. Joshua testifies to the fact that Moses is the author, and the Lord Jesus Christ himself testifies to the fact that Moses is the author. I want us to look also today as we continue our introductory thoughts on its place in the Pentateuch. Exodus is the second of five books that has been written by Moses, and those five books are what we call the Pentateuch. And really, it's evident as we go through the Word of God that these five books form one narrative. That it's one continual thought here that Moses gives us regarding the history of the nation of Israel. And uh, we don't pick it up so much in the in the English language, but if you study this out in the Hebrew, you will find out that the first Hebrew word of Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy is a conjunction. It is a conjunction such as our word and, and it's used to connect the narrative of the previous books. We see that every book that Moses has written is connected to the previous book by the conjunction that he begins this book with. And even in the English copy of our word of God, we can even pick that up there because we, as you look back into the book of Genesis, you will see that Genesis concludes with Joseph being sold down into Egypt by his brothers, and eventually there's a famine in the land of uh, uh, in the land where uh, Jacob and his sons are, and and they, long story short, they come down into into Egypt. Joseph reveals himself to them, and he calls them to come down into the into Egypt for the remaining years of famine. And while they are there, we're going to see in these things, in these verses, uh, in a couple of days, that the Bible tells us that while they were in Egypt, that the children of Israel were fruitful, that they multiplied exceedingly, just as God had promised Abraham that his seed would be as the stars of the sky and the sand on the sea of multitude. And uh, then we see that Jacob dies and uh, Exodus picks up talking about this is how Jacob, this is how Israel come down into the land of Egypt. 
and the first six verses of Exodus that we read today tie it effectively to the book of Genesis. Uh, as we read these verses, it picks up exactly where uh, Genesis has, has, draw, has left it off the narrative, and it tells us about those who came down into Egypt. As I mentioned, and, and we just want to look at this for a moment today uh, and, and apply this to our lives. Exodus means going out or the way out. You may want to jot that down in your Bible. Exodus, going out, the way out. And thus it describes for us Israel's going out of Egypt. I mentioned yesterday that there was a twofold purpose of this book. One of the reasons, one of the purposes is to fulfill the promise that God made to Abraham in Genesis 15, 13, and 14. The other purpose that I mentioned was to show us God's program and purpose for redemption. Exodus is a book of redemption. You say, what do you mean by that? Well, first of all, Exodus records the redemption of Israel from Egyptian bondage. They'd gone into Egypt. They were somewhat uh, favored by the Pharaoh that Joseph worked under. And then the time came that that Pharaoh died and a new Pharaoh rose up that did not know Joseph. And, and he persecuted the nation of Israel and Israel called for a deliverer. And, uh, and God delivers them. Keep in mind that we're, I, redemption is the idea of deliverance. God delivers Israel from Egyptian bondage. And friend, let me remind you today, it is God's desire, not just to simply to save you from sin, but to redeem you from Egypt. Egypt, in the word of God, is a picture of the world. And, and friends, we don't need to live in Egypt. Oh, it's true that we live in this world, but we ought not to allow this world um, to live in us. There's a song that says the, whole, the truth of God taking his people out of Egypt, but the challenge he had in getting Egypt out of them. And friends, we need to be at the place that we allow God to get Egypt out of us, that we are separate from this world that we live in. Oh, how important that is for us to know and that to, and, and, and in the day and age we live in and to live in light of that truth. Secondly, the book of Exodus teaches us that redemption is necessary if a person is to have a right relationship with a holy God. Frank, there are so many in our world today that are trying to have a right relationship with God through the things that they do and uh, through their uh, heritage and things of that nature. But friends, it's important for us to understand that there's only one way that we can have a right relationship with God, and that is through the redemption that Christ has provided upon the cross of Calvary. It's not through a church. It's not through membership. It's not through baptismal waters. It's not through good works. It is through what Jesus Christ has done upon the cross of Calvary. And if we're going to have a relationship with the Holy God, then the sin problem must be taken care of. And the only thing that can take care of that sin problem is the death of the Lord Jesus Christ upon the cross. The Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. She shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sin. And then we also see here that the book of Exodus teaches us that a redeemed people must be constantly cleansed from defilement in order to have fellowship with God. The Bible says in 1 John 1, 8, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But then it says in 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Friends, continually we get defiled and we need cleansing from that defilement if we are going to enjoy fellowship with God. The book that follows the book of Exodus is the book of Leviticus. And some people find Leviticus hard to understand, but in a nutshell, this is the message of Leviticus. God is holy and God demands holiness from us as his people. So as we close today, let me ask you first of all, have you been redeemed from your sin? Have you acknowledged that there is nothing that you can do to save yourself? And have you turned to the Lord Jesus Christ in repentance and faith and said, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Forgive me of my sin. Cleanse me. Bring me into a relationship with you. Friend, if not, today would be a wonderful day to do that. He is the only one that can save you. Christian, how hard are you seeking 
to be continually cleansed from any defilement that would come into your life so that you can have that pure walk, that pure fellowship with the Father that he desires for you to have. Have a great day.